Today's video is sponsored by Tic Tacs, because sometimes your tics need a little tack. Okay, let me know how many of you rolled your eyes at that one. Watch it, Alan, I'm shooting. It's time to show a little appreciation to the Italian stallion of gore, Lucio Fulci. As a die-hard Italian horror fan, I absolutely love Lucio Fulci. He's one of my favorite directors of all time, and without question, he is my favorite Italian horror director. I just love his filmmaking style because his movies are so gorgeous to look at, but they have some of the most brutal, nasty kills in all of horror. There's a reason that Lucio Fulci is known as the Italian godfather of gore. That's the case with many Italian horror movies, which is why I love them so much. They are so beautifully shot, but they have some of the most gnarly kills in, in the horror genre. Uh, you, you see this in Dario Argento movies, you see this in Mario Bava movies. Many Italian horror movies have those brutal kills in absolutely gorgeous looking films. And a lot of times they mix the beauty with the death. But I think Lucio Fulci was the master at this, and many people would agree with that. So I wanted to honor one of my favorite directors by counting down my top 10 favorite kills in Lucio Fulci movies. These are going to be some bloody kills, so this video is probably going to get flagged, but eh, who cares, let's enjoy the violence. <laughs> that sounded so wrong. Oh, and before we get going, I just want to say spoiler alert, spoiler alert, because I'm going to have to spoil some of the scenes in these movies in order to talk about my favorite kills. Now, Lucio Fulci has done many movies, and a lot of his movies have some quality kills. But this is my top ten, and I know yours is going to be different from mine. This is just my opinion. There's no reason to get upset about it, but this is the internet. People want to get upset about these kind of things. But this is just for fun, so let's just sit back and enjoy as I count down my top ten favorite Lucio Fulci kills. Number ten, Face Blown Off, The Beyond. <laughs> You're going to see The Beyond a few more times on this list because it's my favorite Italian horror movie, and so many Fulci movies have multiple good kills, so I'm going to be double-dipping a few times on this list. Many people would say that this is the most notorious scene in this movie, and it is a great scene, but for me there are some better kills in The Beyond. Uh, th this one is still great, though, mostly because it's... it's horrible, but it's darkly comedic, in, in a very cruel way. <gasps> Earlier on, you have this little girl whose mother is preparing uh, her dead father for his funeral, and she ends up dying, and you don't really know what happens to the girl. All you know is that she gets bombarded by zombies at one point, but then we see her later on, and we notice that she has white eyes. That's a connection to this woman named Emily who appears throughout the film. Uh, the plot of this movie is that a hotel was built over one of the seven gateways to hell, and Emily basically saw hell, and as a result, she becomes blind. So, you have this little girl who watched her mother die, got bombarded by zombies, got influenced by hell, I guess, and the only way this can go is to see her face get blown off. <laughs> It's a very quick shot, though, and most Lucio Fulci gore scenes, they, they last for a little longer, but this one is still very good, just because the circumstances around it make it darkly comedic, for me at least. Does that make me a bad person? Eh, probably. <laughs> Ah! 
Number 9, The Cliff Fall, from Don't Torture a Duckling, and The Psychic. <laughs> I put these two in the same spot because they're essentially the same scene, just they're involving different characters and one happens at the beginning of one movie and the other happens at the end of the other movie, but they're essentially the same thing. I like these scenes because these two make me laugh because there is a bit of a cheapness in these two scenes. I mean, they're very well done, they're very well shot, it's a creative cliff fall, but because of certain elements, they just make me laugh. No. No. In both these scenes, the characters either fall or jump off a cliff and turn into mannequins. And fall into the arms of sin. Sin that God easily forgives, yes. These are the most over-the-top falls I've seen in any movie, because mostly as the characters are falling, their faces or their clearly fake mannequin faces are scraping against the cliff and, you know, scratching up their faces, causing more gore. It's a very gratuitous cliff fall, and you can tell that the goriness of the scene is unnecessary. The character is falling off a cliff, but it's that extra fulci element that just makes these some of the most unique falls in any movie. They are my brothers. Sure, the effects work in these scenes aren't as good as in other Fulci movies, but that's kind of why I love them so much. The, the fakeness of them, the over-the-topness of them, it's just people falling off a cliff. But Lucio Fulci said, no, we're not just going to have people fall off a cliff. We have to take it to the nth degree. I remember seeing Don't Torture a Duckling first, and then seeing that scene and laughing at it. Then, a few years after, I saw The Psychic, and it opened with this woman falling off a cliff, and I'm just like, it's the exact same thing. So yeah, Fulci kind of double-dipped here, but I'm kind of okay with it because the scenes are very funny to me. <laughs> If you're gonna have someone fall off a cliff, you might as well go all out. Number 8, City of the Living Dead, The Drill Kill. <laughs> This was the first entry in Lucio Fulci's Gates of Hell series, and it has some fantastic and very unique kills. You will be seeing City of the Living Dead later on this list as well, because, let's face it, again, it has some great kills. <laughs> You have people's heads getting squeezed from the back, and you see brains just squirting out of people's scalps. You have so many great zombie-related kills, but one of my favorites involves Giovanni Lombardo Radici, who's a well-known actor in Italian horror. Uh, he was in two of my favorite cannibal movies. He was in a Ruggiero Diodato's House on the Edge of the Park, which is a very underrated, disturbing movie. Uh, here he plays a pervert who ends up getting a drill through his neck. <laughs> the main reason I put this kill on the list is because I like Giovanni Lombardo Radici, and whenever he's in a horror movie, you're guaranteed that his character is gonna have one of the most over-the-top kills in the movie. His best death would have to be in Cannibal Apocalypse, but that was not directed by Lucio Fulci, but here we have a fantastic drill death. The effects work is very well done. You see the drill going into his neck, all the gore, and of course, Lombardo Radici 
always does a great job when he gets killed in a movie. He, he always goes all out during his death scenes. I know it's weird putting a kill on the list mainly because of the actor involved, but what can I say? Giovanni Lombardo Radici knows how to die in horror movies. <laughs> Number 7, I Gouge the Beyond. We have the Beyond once again. Every Lucio Fulci fan knows this. Fulci had a thing for eye trauma. In most of his horror movies, you would see very bad things happening to eyes. I see this all the time. Gore fans such as myself can handle so much guts being ripped out and all these bloody scenes, but I always say when you start messing with the little things, that's what makes people squirm. Eyes, fingernails, teeth. Eyes especially. When you mess with eyes in a horror movie, it just freaks people out. And that's probably because these are a very important thing to us. In order to see, we need our eyes. So we don't want any damage happening to these. So naturally, Lucio Fulci likes to fuck with them. There's quite a few scenes of eye trauma in the beyond, but this is one of the best. You have this plumber walking through this basement, and then all of a sudden this hand comes out and just goes right for his face. And what makes this scene so effective is the eye isn't getting cut or poked in any way. It's getting pushed out of this guy's head. This hand just latches onto this guy's face and you see the thumb just start pushing the eye out of its socket. It's so gnarly. It's one of those scenes where you can kind of feel it. You just feel that thumb there and you just wonder what what it would feel like to have your eye pushed out of its socket and just it makes you go <laughs> Anybody out there who has sensitive eyes or doesn't like seeing bad things happening to eyes, I apologize for this one, and I'm gonna have to apologize for other spots on this list because you, you are going to see more eye trauma. What do you want? It's Fulci. Number six, House by the Cemetery, Head Cut Off. No, no, no! House by the Cemetery was the unofficial third installment of Lucio Fulci's Gates of Hell series. It wasn't originally made as an entry in the Gates of Hell series, but it's sort of been adopted into that trilogy. This is the most atmospheric entry in the Gates of Hell trilogy. I love City of the Living Dead, I love The Beyond, obviously, but House by the Cemetery has the creepiest atmosphere. His voice! I can hear it now! I hear it! I hear it everywhere! And what we have here is one of the most messy decapitations in any movie. We have this new babysitter for Bob, one of the most awkwardly dubbed kids ever. Bob? Look, it's time for your nap, honey. No, I want to play. Don't whine. She gets the worst death in the movie. There are some quality deaths, like a scene where a woman gets stabbed in the back of the head and the knife comes out of the mouth, but I've also seen that in pieces, and I saw pieces before I saw House by the Cemetery years ago. But here you have a woman getting her head cut off, and it's one of the most painful decapitations I've ever seen. <laughs> Just like one cut and you see the blood gushing out, then another cut, then another cut. It's just like this person is slitting this woman's throat repeatedly until the head comes off. And? 
this scene shows why I love Lucio Fulci kills in his movies, and I'll get into this a little more later on in the list, but still, this is such a brutal decapitation that it just stuck in my mind ever since I saw it. If anyone were to cut my head off, one, please don't do it, but two, just make it one quick swipe. Don't do this. <laughs> Number five, Fire and Window Jump, The Black Cat. In my opinion, The Black Cat is Lucio Fulci's most underrated movie. I absolutely love this film. If I were to do a ranking of Lucio Fulci's movies, this would be a very close third. It would be The Beyond, Zombie, and then The Black Cat. This one's more about atmosphere and cinematography than it is about the kills. You still get some quality gore scenes here, but this one isn't really about the death. And it's a movie that people can have a hard time taking seriously because it's a movie where the killer is a cute little kitty cat. This is a perfect example of a director taking a silly idea and making it work because this is one of the most atmospheric horror movies in Italian horror. And this cat doesn't fuck around. Seriously, this kitty is a beast. He has some quality kills in this movie. Hands down, my favorite is when this woman is sitting in her apartment and the cat manages to set this place on fire. It's a quality fire stunt, and I love me a good fire stunt, but what takes this one to the next level is this woman, while on fire, jumps out the window. I just love this scene. Even in a movie where Fulci is focusing more on the atmosphere and the creepiness, he still has to put in some over-the-top kills. It's just such an over-the-top death. We're not just gonna set this person on fire, we're also gonna have her jump out the window and fall to the ground while set on fire. <laughs> The Black Cat is a very underrated movie. Sure, the story is kind of all over the place, but if you're looking for a good, creepy, atmospheric, gothic horror movie, I'd say check out The Black Cat. <laughs> Number four, Razor Blade Kill, The New York Ripper. Her skin is so warm and so... This is one of the most brutal kills in any horror movie. The New York Ripper is my favorite giallo by Lucio Fulci. Some people would say it's more of a slasher movie. I say it's definitely a giallo movie. Either way, the kills in this movie are very mean-spirited. He used a blade. He stuck it up her joy trail and slit her wide open. There is a silliness to the movie because the killer quacks like a duck and speaks in this goofy duck voice. <laughs> but once you realize the killer's motivation and why he speaks with this voice, it's not funny anymore and it's actually very tragic. <laughs> But going back to the kills, because that's what we're talking about here, the kills are just so brutal and mean. I mean, this guy doesn't just stab women, he butchers them. The best kill in the movie, and the most hard-hitting kill in the movie, is when the killer has tied up this prostitute that our leading detective has been seeing. <laughs> 
283 foot in street. It adds this extra level of tension to the scene. The killer tells the cop, hey, I'm going to murder this woman you've been seeing, and he kills her in such a painful way. He takes this small razor blade and just starts cutting her up. Meanwhile, the detective is trying to get to her before she is killed. Of course, he doesn't get there in time. <laughs> what makes this scene such a punch in the gut is the woman knows what's going to happen, and she is... you can hear her screaming as he's doing this to her. And he doesn't do it quickly. He slowly moves the razor towards whatever part of her body that he's going to cut up. <laughs> this particular kill, while it doesn't make my number one Lucio Fulci kill, it is one of his most memorable, probably because it's just so violent and brutal. And again, there's some serious eye trauma in this kill, because Lucio Fulci. What do you want? The dedicated killing to you. <laughs> Gonna sacrifice a woman just for you. Number three, puking guts out, City of the Living Dead. This one is so nasty, I just love it. And it's a two-for-one. We have this couple making out in a car, which we all know leads to very bad things in horror movies. Then the young lady sees the priest, or the ghost of the priest, that has essentially caused the whole mess in this movie. The build-up to the gore is so great, because it all starts with tears of blood dripping from her eyes. Then, she starts puking her guts out. <laughs> and Fulci takes his time with this scene. It's not just like the guts come out and then we cut away. It focuses on these guts coming out of her mouth, and they're using real organs, which adds to the realism. <laughs> the effects work is very, very good in this scene, again, because there are real organs being used, and there are some times where you can tell it's a dummy head that the guts are coming out of, but still, that's a good-looking dummy head. The boyfriend is freaking out, the guts are spilling out of her mouth, and again, this is a two-for-one kill, because as this is happening to her, she grabs the back of her boyfriend's head and squeezes the brains out of him. As great as the kills are in City of the Living Dead, once you see a woman puke her guts out, everything's pretty much gonna pale in comparison. There was no way that this could not make the top three. <laughs> Number two, the eyeball kill, zombie. I know I don't have a lot of kills from Zombie on this list, and that's weird because Zombie is my second favorite Lucio Fulci movie of all time, and my favorite traditional zombie movie. The reason I don't have many kills from here on the list is because most of the kills, while great, are typical zombie movie kills. Zombies getting their heads blown off or their heads bashed in, zombies tearing out people's throats. It's what you see most of the time in these movies. They're all great, but for Fulci kills, I wanted to pick the more creative ones. <laughs> There are great scenes in this movie, and if I were to do a list of my favorite Lucio Fulci moments, 
This would have one of my favorites, the scene where a zombie fights a shark, and various other ones. But the focus on this video is the kills, and Zombie has probably the most notorious kill in Lucio Fulci's filmography. The eyeball kill. Yep, we got some more eye trauma here. <coughs> This is the perfect example of why I love kills in Lucio Fulci movies. I am a gorehound, I love gore, and there is some great gore in many horror movies, but what I love about Fulci is he mixes suspense into the gore. We saw this in the razor blade kill in New York Ripper. We saw this in the gut puking scene in City of the Living Dead. Lucio Fulci adds suspense to the gore. The build up to the kill can be just as important, if not more important, than the kill itself. And then we have the eyeball scene from Zombie. You see this woman getting pulled towards this splinter. We see it getting closer and closer and closer to her eye. And squeamish people won't want to look at it, but at the same time, they can't look away because you're wondering, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? I don't want to see it, but I can't look away because I need to see if it does happen. And it's just so simple, just an eye being moved closer to a splinter. And seeing that eye getting closer and closer and closer, it, it's so suspenseful. It just builds up the tension, and then you get the payoff when the, when the splinter goes in the eye. <laughs> It's one of the best kills in any zombie movie, and that really is because of the tension. Doing it slowly makes it all the more agonizing. <laughs> I have been talking about so much eye trauma in this video that my eyes are starting to hurt, so let's just move on. Zombie has one of the greatest kills in zombie movies, in Italian horror movies, it's just a fantastic kill. Now, as iconic as the eyeball scene is in Zombie, as great as all these kills are, there is one kill that tops all of them. I knew this was going to be number one when I made this list. This was the scene that made me want to make this list. So let's just get on to my number one favorite Lucio Fulci kill. Number one, the spider scene from the beyond. <laughs> the Beyond is my favorite Italian horror movie, so there was no way it wasn't going to make the number one spot. And here, this is just Lucio Fulci's greatest kill. The thing about The Beyond is, it's very similar to Suspiria. Both The Beyond and Suspiria, this is the case with many Italian horror movies, they're not really trying to tell a coherent story. There is a story there, but for the most part, they're just trying to get you to experience a nightmare. Hence why these two movies are more dreamlike than most other movies. You are Liza, aren't you? Yes, my name is Emily. I've been looking for you. Some people would complain that these movies don't make any sense. Well, nightmares don't make any sense. You have a nightmare, it doesn't really make any sense, it's just horrifying shit happening to you in your dreams. You have this guy doing research in a library, and then he falls off the ladder and hits the ground. And then we see all these tarantulas crawling towards him. Now, a lot of people complain about a couple scenes in the Beyond where people could just move. 
They always ask that, why don't these people just move? You have this guy lying on the ground with tarantulas crawling towards him, they soon start crawling all over him, and he doesn't move. I have a couple explanations for that. One, he just fell off a ladder. And when you fall off a ladder, you don't get up right away. And there's a very good chance that he injured himself. Like, he probably... There's a good chance that he broke his back when he hit the ground, so he can't really get up. And second, again, this is a... This is a movie about getting you to experience a nightmare. How many times have you had a nightmare where something scary is happening to you and you couldn't move. This is that experience. So this guy's laying on the ground and these spiders just start crawling all over him and they just start ripping apart his face. <laughs> Again, this is pure nightmare fuel. I mean, just laying on the ground helpless while these tarantulas are eating his face. It's just, it makes you squirm, it makes you want to look away, but again, you kind of can't. You just think about that scenario. You're helpless lying on the ground as the spiders are tearing apart your face, and what makes it even worse is that you see the spider going for your eye before it rips it out. It's just like in the splinter scene from Zombie. This woman sees the splinter going towards her eye, but she can't do anything about it. This, I think, is a little worse in this case, because it's not just go a, a, a splinter going towards the eye, it's spiders going for your whole face. <laughs> The effects are a little wonky in a couple places, but they're still very well done, especially when the tongue is bit and when the eyeball gets attacked. <laughs> For me, this is the best kill in Lucio Fulci's entire filmography. It's gory, it's suspenseful, it makes you squirm, it's creative, it, it has all the elements to make it a fantastic, memorable kill. The Beyond is my favorite Lucio Fulci movie, it has some of my favorite scenes in Italian horror, and this is hands down one of my all-time favorite kills in Italian horror. <laughs> Of course, Lucio Fulci has many fantastic kills, because again, he is known as the Italian godfather of gore. So, for my fellow Fulci fans out there, leave a comment down below letting me know your favorite Lucio Fulci movies, and if you haven't seen too many Fulci movies, just let me know your favorite gore scene in a horror movie. I know I've already asked that before, but hey, I want everybody to have fun in the comment section. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to feature other directors and the kills of their movies, or let me know some other top 10 lists you'd like to hear, as long as they're horror-related. If I can do them, I will do them, gladly. But again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for continuing to support this channel. Um, I hope you have a great day, or a great week, or, or whatever. And uh, until the next time, this is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. Ah, don't worry, I'm not going to do anything. I just wanted to see how many of you would flinch. Of course, I'm looking at a camera, so I can't really see that.